Warm greetings to you all. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for the opportunity to join in participating in this year's National HIV AIDS Long-Term Survivors Day events. Today's observance provides us with a chance to reflect on all those whom we have lost in the past 40 years from HIV AIDS, estimated to now number over 730,000 individuals in this country. This is not just a statistic, for they were our friends, our colleagues, and our loved ones, partners, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, mothers, and fathers. The theme of this year's observance is AIDS at 40, envisioning a future we never imagined, reflecting that it was 40 years ago today that the first report of what was then a mysterious unknown disease, later to be named HIV AIDS, was published in Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report. During the subsequent four decades, we have seen unprecedented advances in basic and clinical research, resulting in highly safe and effective strategies in our HIV prevention and treatment toolkits. These accomplishments are the direct result of the unique long-standing partnerships that were forged and continue today between scientists, healthcare providers, industry, and the HIV-affected community. While these successes have resulted in significant decreases in HIV incidence and mortality, as witnessed by the long-term survivors that we honor today, the HIV-AIDS pandemic is not yet over. The latest statistics indicate that there are approximately 1.2 million people with HIV in the United States about 14% of these individuals are unaware of their infection. Additionally, there were approximately 38,000 people newly diagnosed with HIV in 2018. The majority of these new diagnoses were among young adults aged 13 to 34 years of age, especially among men who have sex with men, blacks, African Americans, and Hispanic Latinos. The COVID-19 pandemic has added yet another challenge that we must overcome as we continue to strive to end the HIV pandemic. As has been the case for virtually everyone in this country and around the world, this has been an extraordinary challenging and difficult year. It has required creative and innovative approaches to both provide and access HIV prevention, treatment, and care, while healthcare systems are overwhelmed and trying to relieve the pain and suffering of those with COVID-19, including people with HIV and SARS-CoV-2 co-infection. Many of the lessons learned from responding to the HIV AIDS pandemic will be crucial in our ending the COVID-19 pandemic. Two of these important lessons are, one, science will provide the solution to this pandemic, and two, societal divisiveness is counterproductive in a pandemic. We must not be at odds with each other since the virus is the common enemy, not each other. An effective response to these dual pandemics requires an unprecedented coordinated and collaborative global effort of scientists, industry, and community partners to accelerate basic and clinical research. Ending the HIV pandemic is an achievable goal, one that will require that we continue to collectively work together in optimizing the implementation of the numerous evidence-based tools in our prevention and treatment toolkits, both in the United States and worldwide, as well as in continuing the development of new and innovative approaches, including an HIV vaccine and a cure that can be readily utilized by individuals with HIV and those at risk of infection.
as we honor the long-term HIV AIDS survivors today and remember all those we have lost, we must rededicate our commitment and continue to advance our efforts to achieving our goal of ending the HIV pandemic. Please join me now in viewing a tribute video developed by the National AIDS Memorial, which captures the stories of many long-term survivors of the HIV AIDS pandemic. The video was filmed in the AIDS Memorial Grove. Once again, thank you for inviting me to participate in today's event. Please stay safe, and if you, and if you have not yet been vaccinated against COVID-19, please do so to protect yourself, your family and loved ones, and the entire community. The worst thing in those days was the continual drumbeat of death and illness. People were just dying all around us. It just seemed like my whole existence was being wiped out. And as an HIV positive man, I just knew that I would be next. Worst of the AIDS epidemic was in the 80s and the 90s. People were dying all around us, and it was like being dropped into a war zone. I went to a lot of memorials, uh, a lot of tears. I lost all, I mean, friends, lovers, family, you name it. I literally froze in my own place for the fear that I would be next. I fully expected to be dead. I could talk to no one about it. I was had so much shame in the beginning. I actually felt dying would have been the easiest thing to do because then you wouldn't have to watch everybody dying. In 1996, protease inhibitors came along and changed the game. People stopped dying in such huge numbers. I believed in them because when I started them, I had 70 cells, and two weeks later, I had 280. I realized that I was gonna live long enough to buy a car and be able to make all the car payments. It sounds like it should be one of those Oh, be grateful, have a party, you're gonna live. It was the exact opposite, it sent me into a tailspin. You cannot watch that many people die. You cannot watch the injustice that we watched and not have that affect you. I experienced a deep depression that I didn't recognize and I didn't know how to get help for it. Once the worst of AIDS was over, things subsided, people were moving on with their lives. Though that moving on was difficult for a lot of us. 46 to 48 percent of us deal with depression, suicidal thoughts and tendencies. Anxiety, lack of future orientation, not being able to imagine being an old person. It would be wrong for me to talk about how sad and how tragic and how just, you know, confusing it was without talking about how beautifully people came together and took care of each other and formed a community that was very strong and resilient. We had to take care of ourselves. And I think that was the tipping point, was when we began to learn how to take care of each other. We showed the world how to handle AIDS. How do we treat AIDS patients? I certainly honor all of the organizations that are still trying to do work with people with HIV and AIDS. But now it's like because we're living in this effect, because we're living, there's a lot less funds devoted to these agencies. Society in general, when the medications came, shelved us all. They wanted us to shut up and go away. It startles me. It wasn't, you know, 20 years ago, and people are acting like this never even happened. We're gonna go into retirement and long and aging in poverty, and no one's prepared. Of all the things I planned on, the one thing I didn't plan for was being alive and thinking about retirement. We have to show the world the way, the path, again, how to take care of elderly with AIDS. Whatever we didn't get right in the first part of the epidemic, you know, we can get that right this time. I am taking all of the knowledge 
that I have gathered and using that to try to recreate community, rebuild my life, and build the future that we're so scared of. I'm an AIDS long-term survivor. I'm an AIDS long-term survivor. I am an AIDS long-term survivor. We're still here. We are still here. We're still here. We are still here. We're still here.